Have you ever watched Raiden unleash his signature lightning bolt in Mortal Kombat and wondered what it would actually feel like to wield that kind of power? Today, we're putting your body through the ultimate stress test. Could you survive being the God of Thunder in real life? We're breaking down three of Raiden's most impossible abilities, generating lightning from your bare hands, teleporting through electrical storms, and flying by riding electromagnetic fields. I'll give each power a survivability grade using some generous sci-fi assumptions because, let's be honest, we need all the help we can get when we're talking about channeling the raw power of nature through human flesh. Let's start with the most iconic Raiden move, shooting lightning bolts from your hands. Real lightning packs between 1 and 5 billion joules of energy released in just a few milliseconds. To put that in perspective, 1 billion joules could power the average American home for about 3 months. Now imagine generating that much energy from your body and releasing it in the blink of an eye. Your body runs on roughly 100 watts of power, about the same as a light bulb. Lightning needs the power of a small nuclear reactor, but you have to make it instantly. The most powerful electric animal on Earth is the electric eel. It can make 600 volts and about 1 amp of current. That's impressive for a fish, but lightning needs around 100 million volts and 20,000 to 30,000 amps. You need to be roughly 170,000 times more powerful than nature's best electric animal. But voltage and amps are just the start of your problems. Lightning gets as hot as 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's five times hotter than the sun's surface. The moment you make a lightning bolt, you're creating a super hot channel that would instantly turn any body parts within several feet into gas. Your hands wouldn't just burn, they would stop being solid matter. Where would this energy even come from? Your body stores energy as molecules and fat. To make a single lightning bolt, you need to instantly turn about 500 pounds of pure fat into electrical energy. That's assuming perfect conversion, which is impossible. In reality, you need to burn your entire body mass several times over just to make one decent lightning strike. The storage problem is just as impossible. Your body can't handle high voltage electricity, your nervous system works on tiny electrical signals, trying to store millions of volts in your body would be like trying to hold a nuclear explosion in a paper bag. Every cell in your body would burst from electrical pressure long before you could shoot that energy outward. Even if we get creative with sci-fi solutions, you're looking at extreme changes. You'd need computer implants throughout your entire body. Think special organs that could store and move massive electrical charges without heating up. Your bones would need to be replaced with some kind of super strong material that could handle electrical stress. Your body would need to be replaced with a special fluid that could carry electrical current without boiling. We're talking about turning yourself into more machine than human. Your heart would need to be a fusion reactor. Your muscles would need to be electromagnetic coils. Your skin would need to be some kind of bioengineered material that could withstand plasma temperatures. At this point, you're basically a Raiden-shaped robot with a human brain floating in a cybernetic shell. But let's say we somehow solve all these problems. You've got your fusion-powered heart, your superconducting blood, and your plasma-resistant skin. Could you actually survive using these powers? Every time you generate lightning, you're creating an electromagnetic pulse that would fry every electronic device within hundreds of yards. Your own cybernetic organs would need to be shielded against your own electrical attacks. You'd be walking around in a permanent Faraday cage just to avoid electrocuting yourself. The thermal management alone would be impossible. Even with perfect superconductors, you're still dealing with massive energy transfers that generate heat. You'd need some kind of exotic cooling system, maybe liquid nitrogen flowing through your veins, instead of blood. At this point, we're so far from human biology that calling it surviving is generous. For lightning generation, I'm giving this a survivability grade of F-. Even with unlimited sci-fi technology, you'd be dead the moment you try to channel your first lightning bolt. The energy requirements alone would liquefy your body, and that's before we even consider the heat, electromagnetic effects, or the fact that you'd essentially need to be rebuilt from scratch using materials that don't exist. Now let's talk about Raiden's lightning teleportation, that flashy move where he dissolves into electrical energy and reappears somewhere else in a crackling bolt of lightning. This might actually be the most impossible thing we've discussed so far, and that's saying something. 
What Raiden is essentially doing is converting his entire body from matter into energy, moving that energy at lightning speed, then converting it back into matter at his destination. This is basically Star Trek transporter technology, but using lightning as the delivery system. The physics here breaks down into several layers of impossibility. First, let's talk about the information storage problem. Your body contains roughly seven octillion atoms. That's a seven followed by 27 zeros. To teleport, you need to record the exact location and movement of every single one of those atoms. The amount of information needed to map your body would need a computer with more storage than every digital device on Earth combined. We're talking about data storage that exceeds what's even possible with matter itself. But let's say we somehow solve the scanning and storage problem. Now you need to actually turn matter into energy. Einstein's famous equation tells us that a 180 pound human body contains about 8 billion billion joules of energy. That's like 200 million tons of TNT. Then there's the speed factor. Lightning moves at around 224 million miles per hour, roughly one third the speed of light. If you somehow survived being turned to energy and managed to travel at lightning speed, the acceleration forces would be beyond understanding. Fighter pilots black out at around 9 Gs of acceleration. To reach a lightning speed in the time it takes Raiden to teleport, maybe half a second, you'd feel roughly 200 million Gs of acceleration. Your body would be squashed into a pancake thinner than paper before you traveled your first mile. Even if we ignore the acceleration problem, you're now traveling as a bolt of lightning which means you're moving through a plasma channel heated to 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Any biological matter would be instantly vaporized. Even exotic materials would struggle to survive those temperatures while maintaining the complex molecular structures needed to rebuild a human body. The electrical effects alone would scramble any information you're trying to save. Lightning creates massive electrical pulses that would corrupt any data storage system. Even if you started with perfect information about your body, it would be completely scrambled by the time you reached your destination. But let's get really generous with our sci-fi ideas. Maybe we solve this with special physics and moving your mind. Instead of physically moving your atoms, you create a perfect copy at your destination and move your consciousness into it. Your original body gets destroyed while the new one appears. This avoids some of the energy problems, but creates new nightmares. You need quantum entanglement devices capable of maintaining coherence across potentially miles of distance while processing octillions of data points simultaneously. The quantum computers required would need to be larger than city blocks and operate at temperatures near absolute zero. You'd also need to solve the consciousness transfer problem, somehow extracting your memories, personality, and awareness from biological neurons and perfectly recreating them in a new brain. Even in this best case scenario, are you really surviving teleportation or are you dying and being replaced by a copy with your memories? Every time Raiden teleports, he might be committing suicide and creating a duplicate who thinks he's the original. That's a philosophical nightmare on top of the physical impossibilities. For lightning teleportation, I'm giving this a survivability grade of F minus minus. The energy requirements would vaporize you, the acceleration would crush you, the heat would incinerate you, and the information processing requirements exceed the theoretical limits of computation. Even with unlimited future technology, you're looking at a 100% fatality rate every single time you attempt to teleport. Now let's tackle Raiden's ability to fly by riding electromagnetic fields and surfing through lightning storms. This might sound less impossible than teleportation, but the physics here will crush you in ways you haven't even considered yet. When Raiden flies, he's essentially using his body as an electromagnetic propulsion system. Think of it like a maglev train, but instead of riding on carefully controlled magnetic tracks, you're trying to generate thrust by manipulating the Earth's magnetic field and atmospheric electricity. The problem is that the human body is basically the worst possible vehicle for electromagnetic flight. Let's start with the thrust requirements. A Boeing 747 needs about 200,000 pounds of thrust from four massive jet engines to achieve takeoff. You weigh maybe 180 pounds, but you don't have wings or any aerodynamic design. To achieve vertical takeoff using pure electromagnetic force, you'd need to generate a magnetic field strong enough to repel against the Earth's magnetic field with at least 180 pounds of force. The Earth's magnetic field is incredibly weak, only about 0.5 gauss at the surface. To generate meaningful thrust against such a weak field, you'd need to create magnetic fields thousands of times stronger than the most powerful MRI machines. Hospital MRI machines work at around 3 tesla, 
That's 30,000 Gauss. The magnetic fields needed for human flight would need to be at least 100 Tesla, which is stronger than any magnetic field ever made by humans. But here's where it gets really nasty, the conductivity problem. The moment you try to fly using electromagnetic fields, you turn yourself into a human lightning rod. Your body is roughly 60% water with dissolved salts making you an excellent electrical conductor. Flying through the atmosphere while generating massive electromagnetic fields would attract every electrical charge within miles. You wouldn't just be flying, you'd be a moving target for every lightning strike in the area. The air resistance at lightning speeds creates its own nightmare scenario. When objects move through air faster than about 25,000 miles per hour, they create so much friction that the air molecules around them break apart and form plasma you'd be surrounded by a glowing envelope of superheated gas at temperatures exceeding 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is essentially what happens to meteors when they enter Earth's atmosphere. They burn up from air resistance. You'd be experiencing the same forces, but trying to maintain the complex molecular structures needed to keep a human body alive. Even if you somehow survived the plasma envelope, the electromagnetic radiation you'd be generating would cook you from the inside out. High-powered electromagnetic fields create intense radio frequency radiation. You'd essentially be flying around inside a microwave oven that's powerful enough to heat objects from miles away. Your internal organs would start cooking long before you reached dangerous altitudes. The navigation problem alone would be impossible to solve with human biology. Electromagnetic flight would require constantly adjusting field strength and direction to maintain stable flight. Your brain operates on chemical signals that take milliseconds to process. Flying at electromagnetic speeds would require reaction times measured in microseconds. Let's compare this to real-world flight systems. The most advanced wingsuit pilots can glide at speeds up to 200 miles per hour for a few minutes at a time. They're using carefully designed fabric wings and relying on gravity and air currents for propulsion. Even then, wingsuit flying has a fatality rate of about 1 in 2,000 jumps. Now, imagine trying to fly at lightning speeds using electromagnetic propulsion while your body is being bombarded by radiation, heated by plasma, and torn apart by magnetic forces. Generating electromagnetic fields strong enough for flight would require more power than a small city uses. Your biological systems would need to convert stored energy into electromagnetic force at rates that would literally burn through your body mass. You need to consume thousands of pounds of food per minute just to maintain flight, assuming your digestive system could somehow process nutrients fast enough to keep up with energy demands. You'd essentially need a secondary computer system built into your body to handle the thousands of calculations required for stable electromagnetic flight. At this point, you're looking at a complete cybernetic conversion, every biological system replaced with electromagnetic compatible alternatives. But even with unlimited future technology, the fundamental physics problems remain unsolvable. The energy requirements exceed what any portable power source could provide. The electromagnetic interference would disrupt any electronic systems within miles. The heat generation would require cooling systems more powerful than industrial refrigeration units. The structural stress would require materials stronger than anything currently known to science. For electromagnetic flight, I'm giving this a survivability grade of F-. The power requirements alone would kill you. The electromagnetic effects would cook you, the air resistance would incinerate you, and the magnetic forces would tear you apart at the molecular level. Even turning yourself into a flying robot wouldn't solve the fundamental energy and physics problems. After putting your hypothetical body through lightning generation, teleportation, and electromagnetic flight, it's time for the brutal truth about your rate and survivability score. Combining all three categories, you're looking at a final grade that makes failing look optimistic. Lightning generation earned an F- for energy requirements that would liquefy your body and heat generation that would vaporize you instantly. Teleportation scored F- for acceleration forces that would crush you, energy conversion that would explode you, and information processing requirements that exceed the laws of physics. Electromagnetic flight managed an F- for power demands that would drain you dry, magnetic forces that would tear you apart, and electromagnetic radiation that would cook you alive. Your combined rate and survivability score is F minus Q, a level of impossibility so extreme that even theoretical physics gives up and goes home. But here's the one scenario where you might technically survive. And I use the word survive 
very loosely. The heavily modified cyborg approach might let you last a few seconds longer than instant death. Replace your skeleton with exotic metamaterials. Swap your blood for superconducting fluid. Install a fusion reactor where your heart used to be and wrap your entire body in electromagnetic shielding. At this point, you're essentially a Raiden-shaped robot with a human brain floating in a cybernetic shell. You might survive generating one lightning bolt before your cooling systems fail and you melt from the inside out. The reality is that Raiden's powers violate so many laws of physics simultaneously that surviving any of them would require rewriting our understanding of matter, energy, and biology. You're not just asking if you could survive being Raiden, you're asking if you could survive becoming a walking violation of thermodynamics. Which Mortal Kombat character should we put through the science meat grinder next? Sub-Zero's ice powers that would require him to violate the laws of thermodynamics? Scorpion's Hellfire that burns underwater? Or maybe Liu Kang's dragon transformation, which would involve spontaneous matter creation and biological impossibilities that make Raiden look reasonable? Drop your suggestions in the comments, and let me know which fighter you think would have the best chance of surviving their own powers in real life.